This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If there's one thing I think we can all agree upon is that a sad movie death can have a lingering impact if done right. And this is something that was made apparent over 30 years ago in the 86 Transformers movie. As soon as you find yourself connecting with a character they become cannon fodder to move the plot forward. And in the case of the live action Transformers universe we found ourselves reconnecting to old faces just to see history repeat itself. <laughs> What's up guys, my name is RBG and welcome to another Transformers Top 10 video. This is something where we take the best and worst elements of the live action films and comprise them into top 10 rankings. For today's video, I wanted to present a list of the saddest Autobot deaths because there have been a few that have undoubtedly tugged on fans' heartstrings. It seems like that was something Michael Bay got right with each installment. As much as we hate the way our favorite Autobot is portrayed or their design changes, we eventually grow fond of them and even miss them when they're replaced with newer members for the sake of selling toys. But without further ado, here's a list of the top 10 Autobot deaths that kicked us in the gut and left us stunned. Number 10. Leadfoot once TF2 Revenge of the Fallen was done showing us our newer cast of the Autobots, it was time for Dark of the Moon to take things to another level. Besides the basic addition of members who lack personality, we got a group of charismatic a-holes to spice things up. These guys were known as the Wreckers, a trio of engineering geniuses who came to Earth aboard the Autobot spaceship Sanctium. They were by far the coolest looking Transformers I've seen in all the movies. Like this is what we should have gotten out the gate. Badasses who lived up to their name. They were war machines that combined sheer firepower with speed. One of my favorites out of the inventive militia group was the fat bot with an insatiable appetite for destruction, Leadfoot. He applied his knowledge of science to create bigger and louder weapons for his Autobot allies, an approach that mirrored his personality. Leadfoot joined the Autobots in the battle in Chicago and tears an unfortunate Decepticon pilot to pieces alive with the other Wreckers. He would later help Optimus Prime free himself from the cables he got caught in thanks to Shockwave, but after the big battle he went missing. It was later discovered that he was executed by the CIA Black Ops unit, Cemetery Wynn. Thanks to Cade Yeager's acquisition of surveillance footage, the Autobots were able to see what happened to their missing comrade. It showed Leadfoot being mercilessly gunned down by soldiers. Upon watching the footage, Hound sadly took off his hat and held it over his spark in respect for his fallen friend, bitterly cursing the humans responsible as quote unquote savages. This moment absolutely had to be added to the list because it resulted in a revelation to the Autobots. Not all humans are their allies. Optimus Prime was so deeply hurt by the footage that he had to turn away and decided that enough was enough. Covering things up at number 9 is Canopy. Originally named the Ruin Spot, Canopy is one of those robots whose code name fits him perfectly. He's a mobile shelter Autobot. With the Transformers being a hunted species across the world and vehicles being subject to immediate suspicion as Cybertronians, Canopy took the robot in disguise gimmick and completely flipped it in a way that was convenient to him and any innocent bystander. In TF5 The Last Night, a runaway named Isabella and a group of kids decided to hide under debris to hide from the TRF Sentry. After the Sentry leaves, that pile of debris is revealed to be a gentle giant named Canopy, who revealed himself long enough to get a missile to the chest from a drone and fall to the ground dying. This death not only saddened me, but it also infuriated me because the big guy was trying to get the kids to follow him to safety. Who is he? Let's go. As far as you're concerned, my boyfriend. But in typical human fashion, they just babbled about stupid stuff during a serious moment. I mean, the TF sentries were holding off their attack because the kids were in close proximity to him, but they leave the poor robot open to get hit. Now what I will say is that the little girl Isabella added an extra layer of emotion to the scene, because you see her face to face with a dying Autobot who seemed to have a well documented friendship with her, and the pain and sadness can be seen perfectly due to him having a humanoid face. He died bravely as he implored Isabella to run and thanked her for her companionship before drawing his last breath. Number 8 is the Talisman Knight. 
This particular robot is someone who really threw me off in terms of his initial origins. Anthony Hopkins character Edmund Burton stated that there were 12 Guardian Knights alongside the 12 Knights of the Round Table and in the film it shows approximately 12 Knights emerging from the Guardian Knight's ship while the Talisman Knight is dead. So it was unclear if this Knight was one of the members or not. But anyways, after Optimus Prime left Earth, most of the governments of countries declared the Transformers race outlawed and an international military organization named TRF was established. Kay Yeager, along with Bumblebee and Hound, went to Chicago to find at least one surviving Transformer there. Cade approaches a fallen spaceship and inside of it is a knight. He tried to help him but it was too late, but before he died, he gives him a talisman but he refuses. There was just something about the exchange between him and Cade that made me feel for him. It could possibly stem down to the fact that he was mortally wounded in Linking Energon. There's also the pain you can see in his face as he removes his mouth guard to aid him in breathing better. Now in my opinion, if it wasn't for this guy, Optimus would have met his demise. He saw Kay's compassion as a sign that he was worthy of the knight's honor. He used the last of his remaining energy to bid the talisman to grow legs and follow Kay before he finally died. His valiant sacrifice wasn't in vain, as the talisman did indeed find Cade, who subsequently found the staff and saved the earth from Quintessa. Raining down the pain at number 7 is Jetfire. Just gotta say that Jetfire has become one of the most used contenders on all my top 10 videos. He's pretty much a all around bot that doesn't get enough credit in the films which is obviously due to how Michael Bay reduced him to a comical character. But if you take a look at his history you'll see that he was a living legend both in the air and on the battlefield. Back in his glory days Jetfire was a skilled Decepticon soldier. He was one of the best of the best. He would later swear his allegiance as an Autobot and he fell into a great sleep after arriving on Earth. Despite being old, he's still a formidable fighter, shown when he single-handedly destroys Mixmaster and kills Scorpion out even after being mortally wounded. And it's also important to note that his loyalty is admirable. He demonstrated how much of a true Autobot he was after he willingly offered his parts to Optimus Prime, saying that he would give him quote unquote a power like he's never known. He further showed his loyalty by ripping out his own spark. That right there was truly a sad moment, man, because Jetfire didn't really know any of the current Transformers. He was an old Decepticon defect who had shown blind allegiance just to get backstabbed by the faction he considered his family, and he was frozen in stasis lock for years. So he's basically a Cybertronian Steve Rogers, a robot out of time. That's why I absolutely had to add him on this list. At number 6 we have Q. I just know there are going to be fans face palming at the fact that I even mentioned this guy. Which is understandable because he's arguably one of the worst offenders in the most ruined Transformers list. For those out of the know, Q's actual name is Wheeljack, who is a major G1 favorite among the fans. He was a badass inventor bot who had these cool bulb ears that would light up when he talked. Unfortunately, almost everything that made him awesome was stripped away. Apparently, Steven Spielberg wanted the designers to make him look more like Albert Einstein, which is made obvious by the nerdy glasses, wild hair, and mustache. The name Q would be a nod to the famous James Bond character Q, who similarly provided his allies with equipment and gadgets. So they basically reduced Wheeljack into being the stereotypical nerdy inventor. And like most of the fans, I was very disappointed with this drastic change. But due to him being called Q, I was able to separate the characters and think of him as what he was called. I honestly grew to enjoy this robot. Unlike Wheeljack, whose inventions were for the most part defective, Q's creations were effective and always managed to work. He was a great addition to the Autobot roster. Sadly, he didn't get to stick around for very long. During the battle in Chicago, him, Bumblebee, Ratchet, Sideswipe, and Dino were all captured by Soundwave and several Decepticons including Barricade. He realized that the Decepticons were going to kill them, which proves to be true as Soundwave decided to host an execution. And this moment was downright brutal. B. I think they're going to kill us. Q attempts to talk to Soundwave and the others out of killing him and his friends, but he's used as an example and shot twice in the back as his friends watch. Something I noticed is how sad B was when this occurred. This shows that Q was one of his longtime friends. It's just sad that an old and defenseless robot like Q had to die so harshly when he was begging for his life. Jumping in at number 5 is Cliff Jumper. Man, this guy can't catch a break. No matter what continuity he's in, he's always managing to bite the bullet. We've been asking to get a live action version of the character since 2007 and when we finally get him, he gets off immediately. 
which is sad because I really wanted fans who aren't familiar with the character to see how awesome he can be. But anyways, Cliffjumper and the other Autobots were forced to evacuate Cybertron via escape crafts and intended to regroup on Earth when it became clear that they could no longer hold out on Cybertron. Sometime later, the Decepticon Hunter Shatter and Dropkick tracked him to one of Saturn's moons and attempted to torture him to learn Optimus Prime's whereabouts. Though Cliffjumper refused to betray the Autobots, the two Decepticons managed to pick up b 127 signal from the nearby Earth, so the pair decided to go after him instead but not before Shatter tied up the loose end by cutting Cliffjumper in half. I really felt sad because he died an honorable death, not to mention we never really got to see what he was like in action outside of a quick shootout sequence at the beginning of Bumblebee. Number 4. Ratchet One of the most reoccurring characters in the live action films, Ratchet is one of those characters you have to have in the main lineup of any Transformers show or movie. I mean, who doesn't gravitate towards a medic robot who's just as good at destroying vocal processors as he is at fixing them? Although he's a healer, Ratchet often finds himself on the front lines of combat and on occasion, the last hope the Autobots have. You just know he's made tough if he's managed to survive through three films. Unfortunately, his lucky streak came to a screeching halt during the fourth film. After receiving a message from Optimus Prime telling the Autobots to cease all human contact and hide, Ratchet seeks refuge on an abandoned cruise ship. But he is later found by agents known as Cemetery Wind, who hunt down the remaining Autobots with the help of Lockdown, a Cybertronian bounty hunter who travels the galaxy collecting souvenirs from different planets. As the agents and Lockdown found Ratchet's heat signature concealed in a smokestack, the soldiers placed explosives along the smokestack, which then blew up, damaging Ratchet in the process. This is where we see our favorite medic mercilessly slaughtered by the same humans he vows to protect. As he desperately tries to get away, he's shot from behind. He stands up and tries to run away, but his leg is hit by a rocket, which blows nearly all of his leg off except for a sparking stub. What's disturbing about this scene is how confused Ratchet is, because he tells the agents to hold their fire and asks, can't you see I've been injured? When he continues trying to convince them that he's an ally of the humans, Lockdown shoots him with a sniper round, and the evil bounty hunter pulls the spark right out of his chest. I never thought I'd say this, but when I bear witness to this heinous act, I wanted Optimus Prime to hunt down every last human involved and destroy them. And this is coming from a TF fan who's always opposed to Autobots hurting humans. I guess that shows how much I care for this version of Ratchet. Number 3. Optimus Prime Man, it seems like history is doomed to repeat itself, and this statement couldn't be any more true in the case of Optimus Prime. He's basically died in every incarnation of Transformers, which is why I call him Robo-Jesus, because even though he gets killed off, he eventually rises from the dead. If I told you how many times this guy bit the big one, we'd be here all day. Before we talk about his inevitable fate, can we talk about this epic fight scene? I vividly remember being astounded by the awesome choreography that was put into the fight. If you're a devout G1 fan, you'll notice certain references that were pulled directly from the 1986 movie. But after seeing that particular scene and how things were unfolding, I realized that Michael Bay may be referencing one of the darker moments from the old movie as well. During an uneven fight, Optimus proves how effective of a fighter he is when he's on his back foot. He proves his incredible battle powers by fighting Megatron himself to a standstill, defeating Starscream and eventually killing Grindor by ripping his head apart. Unfortunately, while distracted with Sam's well-being, he was killed by Megatron, who viciously stabs and shoots him while his back is turned. And man did this death play with my nostalgia in the saddest way possible. We literally see Optimus' body lose color just like in the old cartoons. I absolutely hated seeing him die. What made it worse was how the military treated his body. I understand that the guy is a fully metallic being, but come on, he deserved better than that. Thankfully, this stuff wasn't a permanent one. After a good stabbing of the Matrix of Leadership, our boy was back on his feet. Coming in at New Metal Dose is Ironhide. The battle-hardened Autobot veteran himself, Ironhide was one of those Transformers that you didn't have to worry about getting taken out. Before he landed on Earth, he served as a captain in the Cybertronian Defense Forces, and I don't think they gave out that position for free. So yeah, Ironhide was a more than capable fighter that I thought we'd see for a while, and it looked like he wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. Punk ass Decepticon. That's until he met his unfortunate end in TF3 Dark of the Moon. After doubling up on his kill count while protecting Sentinel Prime, he was shot in the back by the same Autobot he thought he could trust. Unbeknownst to Ironhide and the rest of the gang, Sentinel made a deal with Megatron to save Cybertron from its destruction. Before anyone can react to this news, Sentinel does a quick heel turn and shoots Ironhide in the back with his hidden cosmic rust cannon. This is probably the most painful looking death featured on the list, and it was the only plausible way Ironhide could go out. 
He was too skilled to be taken down by your average Decepticon. Only a Prime that just so happens to be a double agent could put him down. The most profound part about this death was the element of betrayal itself. As his body crumbled to dust, the weapon specialist asked Sentinel Prime what he had done. Man, this list has been an emotional roller coaster. We've had to go back in time and watch some of the most painful and sad deaths. I've been expressing my feelings on these things, and as all of you know, I've been a strong advocate of expressing yourself. Thankfully, Squarespace gives creators the ability to do this and so much more. If you've ever been hesitant about building a unique blog or website, then you should probably check them out. They have a very user-friendly format that takes you step-by-step -step on how to make your blogs look professional. And if you have questions that need immediate answers, then fret not, because they have a 24-7 customer service. So come on over to Squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, go to Squarespace.com slash RandomBlackGamer to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. The link will be in the description. With that said, let's reveal the top candidate on this sad list. Ending things off at number one is Jazz. It was tough deciding where I wanted to put this stuff on this list, but you just knew he was going to be on it somewhere. Arguably one of the most polarizing deaths in the live action Transformers universe, Jazz was the first Autobot to be killed in the first movie. There was something weird about it. It happened so abruptly in my opinion. Not to mention that when he died, nobody really acknowledged it until the very end of the movie. Hell, Optimus Prime didn't really seem to notice himself and he was literally looking at Megatron when he had Jazz's parts in his hands. It's just weird. Anyways, during the battle in Mission City, Jazz attacked Megatron in order to cover the escape of several fleeing humans, but all he got for his trouble was being blasted by the Decepticon's fusion cannon. The Decepticon leader tossed him through the air, then stomped him with the crushing grips of his talons. Rather than surrender, he continued to fight until he was brutally ripped in two. In the aftermath of Megatron's defeat, Ironhide somberly handed Optimus Prime Jazz's remains as Ratchet reported that he could not save their comrade. It's at this point that you hear the sadness in Optimus' voice. Prime. We couldn't save him. Oh, Jazz. You could just tell that he had a good friendship with Jazz. I remember holding back tears in the theater during this moment. I felt like I had to put him at number one because I feel he was killed off too quickly. Till this day, fans wonder why he had to die first. Was it because he was a brother? Or was it because we needed that emotional death to get us going? Either way, fans are eager to see him make his return to the big screen. Hopefully, he sticks around longer the next time he's introduced. But with that, I'd like to conclude this sad list. It really reminded me that even though these movies feature mindless explosions and poor storytelling, they still do a good job of making us feel for these characters. Hopefully, the trend of pulling on our heartstrings will continue because the live action films seem to be back on the right track. But what did you guys think of this list? Did I include the robots that you expected? And if not, who would you add? Let me know down in the comments below. If you want more Transformers videos, I'd appreciate it if you share with all your friends and followers on different social media outlets. And if you've watched the video to this point, follow your comment up with hashtag gone but not forgotten. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Now it's your best